everybody welcome to the we crochet youtube page no youtube channel facebook page i swear one day i will get this right without having to think about it maybe welcome happy wednesday i at least know it's wednesday i can at least say we're joining us on a wednesday we have a wonderful guest today i'm so excited to get to chat with her you guys all know her and love her already so we know this is going to be like just a fun chat session we've got some exciting new things to share with you that she's working on um a couple new exciting things that we've got coming up uh, we just had a brand new collection launch today um we're not really talking about it today but it's gonna kind of come into play a little bit we have our granny glow up collection you guys i'm so excited for this i haven't received the book yet it's on its way to me so hopefully i will have it soon but we'll have it in time to talk about it it's a granny square collection it's four granny squares a classic granny square plus three more and then you can mix and match it within the five patterns to make whatever you want so there's like a cardigan and it's done, I'm pretty sure in the classic granny square, but you could use like the sunburst granny square and make your cardigan that way. It's so many great ways that you can put things together. I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited. I can't wait to share it with you guys. But yes, thank you, Janice. Um, there's the Granny Glow Up collection. She's on top of it today, guys, with the links. Um, you can go check out the collection there, see all of the five new patterns, a book, an ebook, and the individual patterns. But we'll be talking more about that. Um, I, I'm asking this to Janice. Maybe she can give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Did we post that Granny Square video yet? Or is that coming this week? Posted? Not posted? <laughs> oh, post? Not po No, not posted. Okay, it's coming this week, guys. There's going to be a Granny Square video going up here on the YouTube channel that's going to show you how to make a simple or a classic Granny Square. We are also looking at um, getting all of the Granny Squares in the collection back up there and showing you some tutorials on how to do it. Uh, let's see who's here. Hi, Angela. Hi, Julia. Hi, Heather. Hi, Chris. Great to see you. Hi, Crystal. Yes, it is. Happy October. Um, Chris, it, yes, 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 it is October, although it doesn't feel like October, but that's okay. Um, hi, Keith. Keith, is that you, Keith? I'm not sure. Keith, Keith, a, Keith, a Simon. Hopefully it's Keith. Hi. Um, <laughs> um chris said are the dots hooks in stock our home was robbed and vandalized no i am so sorry to hear that chris yes dots hooks are in stock um and on the site um hi stacy it is great to see you as well keitha hopefully i'm saying that right is that right keitha um let me know i try really hard to say names right sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't um Dot, you just got your first yarn order. Yay! What yarn did you pick out? I'm currently swatching with um, some yarn here, working on getting a swatch going, you know, the favorite part of a project, but it has to be done, especially for a wearable. So we're checking it out to make sure my gauge is right so that I have enough yarn to be able to complete the project. Okay, I told you about the new collection. I'm trying to think what else. I think those are kind of the big things going on right now. Um, oh, no, it's not. We have a sale coming up this weekend. So if you're not signed up for the emails, make sure you get signed up so that you start to get notified when we have things going on. There is a sale coming this weekend. So mark your calendars. If you don't get the emails, check over on the homepage this weekend so you can see what is going on. Um, hi, Carleen. Uh, Keitha is waiting for or an order of Heatherly. Ooh, what are you making in Heatherly? We love Heatherly. Um, all right, let me just bring Hannah in. Hannah's our wonderful guest from Han Jan Crochet. You all know and love her. And I should just bring her in right away because Heatherly was the wonderful yarn that you used in your Time to Bloom blanket. I that was it. absolutely amazing. I still have it with me. I, normally, I, after I do crochet lungs and stuff, I pack stuff away, but I can't bear to pack it away. So it's no. next every day <laughs> it is gorgeous we love that so much um so you can totally still go get that pattern we have it on our site it's also on hannah's site and shop and everything so you can always find it it's called the time to bloom blanket thank you uh janice she just went and threw that in there so you can see that as well and you can see everything that you need you will love it i love it too because it's great for using up your ends from other heatherly projects you've done 
And it's also great for like working in the car or taking just a small bit with you. Like you don't have the full blanket because it's the hexagon motifs that you're working. Motifs are like everywhere this year, aren't they? Like I think everyone's just suddenly cottoned on to, do you know what? It's worth weaving in the ends and it's mm -hmm. worth joining them because they're so portable. You can take them anywhere. Yeah. <clears throat> Totally. Um, so you're getting lots of highs and hellos from Julia and Angela and Carlene and Heather. Um, yes, yes, yes. We love her. We're so happy yeah, to have you. her. Ooh, Cindy said that she started the Contessa cropped pullover using stroll in the color forest Heather. That's going to look beautiful. I like forest Heather. Very yes. nice. Yes. Oh, Dot said she got um, Upcycle Alpaca Blend in time for a cardigan. That's going to be beautiful. Ooh. Yeah. Um, hi, Margaret. Great to see you. Okay, sorry. I was reading the comments. Um, but we have <laughs> Hannah here today, not just to chat. I mean, that's always like a lovely thing that we get to do, and I love chatting with her. But there's a reason we need to chat with her today so that we can make sure you guys all know what is going on. So Hannah just launched a class and she's here to tell us about it. And we're here to tell you why you need it. Um, oh my gosh, Heather just commented, I made two of the Time to Bloom blankets. Oh yes. So it was, it was amazing. So many people have made two, three, four. People have made Christmas versions. People have made, you know, ones to match other people's houses as, you know, housewarming yeah. presents. Just amazing. Yes. I mean, it's a labor of love because it was a, it was oh yes, <laughs> a, lot of fun, a lot of colors. If you went that way, you know, but totally worth it in the end. Totally, totally worth it. So that is awesome, Heather. I hope you at least kept one of them if you didn't keep both of them because they're gorgeous. I want to make one. I have yarn sitting over here that are like ends of it, so mine would not be very like planned. But it's a very good scrap yarn project. Really right. good. Really good. <clears throat> right, right, right. Um, as you can see, every now and then it pops up on Hannah's screen. She's using her dots hooks today, guys. I can see it flashing. We're both using the same size. Do you know what? This I might need to order another set because I'm I'm wearing I'm working them hard. I really, really am. Yeah. And I want to rotate them and I use this one the most, 4.5. I don't know yeah. why it's it's my favorite size. <laughs> that, no, that's definitely a go-to. This one and the five uh, millimeter are the two that are like always missing from my set. And I always have to go find them yeah, and yeah, whatever yeah. else. And, you know, I try to keep track of them, but they're always in a project and I always need them. So yes, grab extra sets. Um, I do want to say that there's going to be some opportunities coming up soon. Uh, we have our big sale scheduled to come up as if you've been following along with us, you know, big sale happens in November. So it is coming up again this year and there are going to be a bunch of sales coming up. So um, grab what you need now because there's sales going on right now. Like we have our month of the yarn sale with um, Wool of the Andes. Sorry, Janice, I think we talked about that link, but if not, <laughs> we have Wool of the Andes on sale right now, right? for Wait, did we switch now or is it Wool of the Andes? Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting. Are it's we Wool of the Andes, Janice? It's a new month. I know. What month are we in? I'm going to... Yes. Okay. I got a thumbs up. I got a thumbs up. <laughs> Wool of the Andes. Well, all of Wool of the Andes. So that's all of the different... Of Wool of the Andes. The different put-ups of Wool of the Andes. It is all on sale right now. Um, that You can go and grab that on sale. So you can stock up on that. Okay. Anyway. Back to why we're here. So there is a new... Oh, Heather said she kept the first one. And then a coworker wanted one made for her daughter for Christmas. Oh, that's so wonderful. I love, love, love that. Um, okay, so Hannah's new course is Crochet in Color. And guys, it's all about picking color and tips and tricks and how to like put colors together and everything else. And we all need it. We all need this class. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about what's exactly in the class, kind of how it all works, um, where they can get it. We'll throw a link in here um, so that you guys can go and shop those at, or, you know, sign up for the course as well. So I kind of got carried away. Like, you know me, Caitlin. I got, <laughs> it's no surprise to you at all, is it? So no. 
it's the time to bloom blanket that we have to blame for it. And look, so last year I did a crochet along of a strawberries and cream blanket, which had 12 colors yes. in it. I yes. did this one this year, which had, can't remember how many colors, but lots of colors in it. Yes. And I, I deliberately didn't give a color placement um, you know, of your A's to your right. F's or whatever yarn. I deliberately didn't do that because I really wanted to encourage everyone to think for themselves, put their own palette together and work it all out. And right. between, we came up with four different yarn packs, didn't we, from yes, Recrochet. Yes. And I put together colors, color selections. There were six colors, that's it, six colors in each yarn pack that I felt went really well together. Um, and the most asked question throughout the whole crochet along was, how do I lay out my motifs? Where do I put my colors? How do I get the balance right? Will this yarn, and if people were using scrap, you know, their stash yarn, they were like, how do I work out if these colors go together? Will right. this work? It was all about what colors to use, where to put them, and how to figure that out. Um, right. And like over the years, this has been asked and asked and asked of me. And I just suddenly thought, do you know what? That's one of my favorite things to do. I'm going to put together a course that goes yeah. right from the word go of color theory. So it teaches you, like I had to remind myself of all the technical bits, um, <laughs> you know, the complementary colors and the color wheel. How do those colors all sit together and why do they sit well together? That's right. the thing. Because yeah, it's it's also going, like that they look like they go together, but why do right. they go together? And right. And this is all really important stuff because especially for our business where we're an online yarn store. And so unless you have like, you know, one of every color or you've been collecting colors and you're storing them or, you know, you have your bits and pieces, it is harder to tell what colors are going to go perfectly together because you can't stick them right next to each other. It exactly. makes it easier when you have a plan for what shade of colors you want to go, what two, you know, hues of color you want to be putting together. And it gives you a really great starting point of where to go and what to start to pick to put things together. Definitely. And I think as well, people get like really scared of ordering and spending money because yarn costs money, yes. doesn't it? And if yes. you make a mistake, um, I, I've done this before. I've ordered stuff and I'm like, that does not work. And then I, I ended up being frustrated. You waste time, you waste money, all of those things. So right. I want to eliminate all of those things as much as possible. So um, so there's a course and there's an ebook that goes with it. And there's also a workbook. Um, and the workbook is kind of to inspire people to think about what color means to them, mm -hmm. like to develop your understanding of color combinations and then to work through, well, it's all very well knowing what colors work together, but then how do you match the yarn? Because if you right. find six colors you love, you're, it's very unlikely that you're going to find a yarn that's the right weight, the right, right fiber type, mm -hmm. and then those exact six colors. Like, right. it just, it's a minefield. So, I've, I've made a system and it's an interactive workbook. I'm so excited by oh, it. Oh, cool. <laughs> that means you can use it on a platform that then you can pull your yarn colors across to match them to the colors you've chosen for your project. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's planners for, we talk predominantly about blankets within it because I just mm. felt, you know, it, the color applies to everything, doesn't it, in every right. project. But I figured blankets are a really good, easy place to start. Yes. Um, and then there's an ebook of nine blankets to try as well. So you get some patterns in it too. Um, there's videos in it. There's, I waffle a lot and <laughs> talk a lot. But I think that's, that's important, isn't it? It's important for yeah. people to kind of understand. And like, as I say, it's one of my very favorite things to do. And I find it like there's loads of tips in there of what I do, how I take photographs. If people think I'm a bit, but I take photographs of everything. And then I yeah. move the yarn around to see how those colors work next to right. the other colors in the palette. Um, and lots of people, when I shared that in the crochet along, were like, you do what, Hannah? And I was like, it really works, really try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, totally, I love it. And you know, I it's not just about what you're doing in your crochet and you're making, it's like color just everywhere. I know when we like even painted the house, I didn't realize, you know, a long time ago that you could have two colors of like brown or gray. Let's go with gray. You could have two colors of gray, but one could have more of like a brown undertone and one could have more of like a blue undertone and it looks completely different. And especially like what your secondary color is changes the way another color looks. And it's all about playing together. And what do you want your bold color to be? What do you want your accent colors to be? It's all that. And another thing I love about playing with color is we always think, you know, we try to have a neutral in 
blankets or like your main color type of thing. And a lot of times we tend to go to cream and gray and brown and tan because we just call them neutrals. But that doesn't have to be your neutral. It doesn't have to be your base of whatever you're making. You can pick a purple, you can pick a red, and then all of your other colors just match nicely in with that. And you can make beautiful, beautiful combinations. Yeah. And there's a whole section in the course, actually, in the workbook and then in, in the ebook talking about that and then showing you the different versions and showing you the same color palette with a white background and a black background. Right. And kind of like, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to do like thought provoking of people and saying like yeah. what does that make you feel how does that make you feel do you like it do you not and right. essentially it doesn't you don't have to follow the rules of color theory as long right. as what what you create makes you happy or even exactly. if you don't want to, you know as long as you're happy with what you create it doesn't matter if it follows the rules but I think I wanted to right. kind of help support people to make those decisions because I think lots of people avoid colorful things or choosing colors yeah they just don't quite know where to go with it. Right, right. And I know too, like for me, I definitely tend to find myself on Pinterest um, looking for different color palettes as just a starting point to say, okay, this is the vibe that I'm going for. I want, you know, like a bright fall palette. So what kind of color does that feel like? And then you can kind of go back and pick the colors of yarn that go with it as well. And I really love doing that too. It really helps me to just have an inspiration point. And then I can play around with what works for me, what feels good, because that's exactly it. It's what feels good to you because you're going to be the one who's using it. Yes, it gets a little bit trickier when you're gifting something, whether it be a blanket or a project that's going to use a lot of colors, but there's still things that you can learn about the person that you're giving it to and use that knowledge to go ahead and pick colors that are going to suit them. So yeah, it's really just an awesome thing. I love that it has the workbook with it that really helps you go and, you know, practice basically picking your colors and getting you excited about all the different things because colors can be hard to pick. They just really can, you know, and pick a skin tone. Yes. Yes. And, and that's what I would say when it, when I finished it, my, my husband gave it the seal of approval. He doesn't normally get involved in my stuff, but I said to him, can you just proofread it for me? Can you just check it through? I said, you don't need, it's not crochet. You don't have to have any crochet knowledge to take this right. course. Um, and he was like, yeah, that's and he finished it. And he was like, that was actually really interesting, Hannah. And I was like, yes, I've done something right. If he's yes. like, he has no interest whatsoever in in home decor or color palettes or anything like that but he was like that was actually quite interesting to find out why things go together or why things don't exactly so yeah, yeah. And, he, and he also then piped up he said i suddenly realized why and our uh, the house that we previously owned we decorated the whole thing from top to bottom in three years and um before we started i did a color palette and mood board for the whole house yes now he's like I understand why you did that now. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> apparently for the last decade, it's been a mystery to him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you were planning the whole thing all along. I was like, yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, you know, we were just talking about swatching and how it's not always our favorite thing to do, but it is one of the things we have to do. And so is picking colors. Like, it is one of the things that we really need to be intentional about. So, like, what you said is that you're not wasting your money. I mean, let's be honest, it's really not wasting it. You'll use it for another project, but you're not, like, rebuying yarn and yarn for a specific project. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. No, no yarn will ever go to waste. <laughs> No, it'll get used for something somewhere yeah. along the line. Yeah. yeah, but it's but it's the frustration I think that people people find, isn't it, of, of of maybe even getting halfway through something and then going, oh, that doesn't work. Yeah, I need to think that through again. So, right. so yeah, that's where the planners. I've done um, three or four different planners for different styles of blankets and things within the workbook, so that you can actually plan it before you even buy yarn before you start anything. Right. Right. Um, I know in the past what I've done is I like to take um, graph paper 
And I am not an artist by any means. Like stick figure drawing is about my highest level of skill here, people. Um, but what I do is I try to replicate whatever I'm making. So if it's a blanket, even if it's like a hexagon or something, I'll make the basic shape, either a hexagon or a square or the full rectangle type of thing. And I'm going to break it down into very geometric shapes. And so I'll just do rings. Like even though each of my stitches might be different in every row or something, I'm still just going to break it down in rings so that I can use like a colored pencil and start filling in the colors. It's not going to match perfectly to the yarn that I have, but it's going to give me a good enough representation to see what it's going to look like yeah. when it's done. And I think that's a really good thing to do if you're looking for the balance, the balance of colors right. within a blanket. That's brilliant to do because you can see, oh, actually, no, there's going to be too much blue there or too much pink or right. I might at, or you think I've used five colors, but actually I think it could do with six. Right. It's a really, really, really good way of doing it. Yeah, because sometimes you don't think about like the repeats that are going to happen. Like I'm going to work these four colors and I love how they go together, but now I'm going to repeat it. So like color one and color four are going to go next to each other. Do they look good together? Do I need to put something in the middle? Do I need to change it around? There's all kinds of things you have to think about when you're picking color. And it's just so important to do it. It doesn't take a ton of time, um, but do it so that you're prepared for your project and it just goes a lot more smoothly when you're working it. Yeah. And also, I think the more you do it, the more fun it becomes. Like, right. It's like it once you break down that barrier and you go actually this isn't as hard as I thought it was once right. you've got fundamentals actually it's really good fun I'm not sure that everyone finds it as fun as me because I'm a bit geeky about it but you know <laughs> Yeah. You know, something else I like to do with color is like, for instance, you have that blanket there behind you. If I find a pattern or something and I'm like, okay, realistically, I'm not going to be making that blanket because it's going to, you know, it's just not in my whatever for, but the colors inspire me. Take photos or screenshots of color palettes that inspire you to then be able to use it later, especially if it's a project that's in yarn, because you can take note of what the yarn was, what the actual colors were, and that can help you with picking similar things or even the exact colors when you want to make a project that calls for that yarn as well. Definitely. And label, label your stash. That's the other thing. Keep a track, oh, <laughs> keep a track of your stash and know what you've got. Because yeah. that, like so many of us has got, have got so much and even just the small scraps, the ends of things I keep and I wind them around a peg and I label what they are because yeah. you never know when you need to have a play with colors and yarn. And the, the right. other thing I have done that I probably shouldn't as a designer admit to, I have done like a completely mixed bag of yarn weights and fibers and yeah yeah and made a blanket just to see what the what the colors are together and whether they work right. it's That's really good awesome. fun it's really good yeah. fun <laughs> it's like a mystery bag just grab one and see what comes next hot luck i call it <laughs> yeah. uh margaret says she loves color work um especially when the ones that don't involve a lot of weaving in events yes we can all agree with that <laughs> Oh, that's the other thing that's in the course that's reminding me. There's a whole other section of breaking down colour work techniques and talking mm. about mosaic crochet, talking about feral, talking about tapestry and the different how, how they're different for different people and what kind of colours work well together, how the charts work and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, whole other section. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great because, again, depending on what colour work technique you're using is going to potentially change the way you plan your colors because okay. if you're working in you know mosaic you can work um all the way across with one color and work all the way back with one color and that would be different potentially in what you're choosing for colors than if you have to change every single row you may take a different course of action because of what's actually going to be touching each other or very close to each other so yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. It's always fun to me to see the different color palettes that get chosen. I know for this granny square collection that I was just talking about, we worked with um, one designer, Brenda Anderson. And so she created her color palette for her projects and we created a whole different color palette. And it's just amazing, like how different we kind of went with things, even though we both started with like a rainbow 
color palette to start with, but like the, the variations that we went with, it was just so cool how different they turned out. Well, and this is the thing, like what rainbow means one thing to one person and one thing to another. Right. Cool. If you if you said to someone um, a seaside theme, for example, mm -hmm. like two different people would have a completely different interpretation of that. Right. Right. Um, and it's all about how the colors make you feel and what your yep. memories are and what your thoughts are and all that kind of stuff. So exactly. Yeah. yeah, I know picking color is hard on our side of things for projects because we're trying to stay neutral. So you can see yourself in it and whatever else. Um, but we're also trying to infuse color into it. And my personal preference is to go towards the cooler colors. Um, and so sometimes I really have to fight myself uh, to think about things on the warmer side of the color palette and how things are going to go together. And then you'll see other people do warm colors and they're absolutely amazing. And it's like, it's not they're bad colors. It's just, again, not where you gravitate to so we try to push ourselves out of that box definitely and I, as a designer i've learned more and more that there are some some colors and some types of yarns that photograph better and represent yes. so it's very hard sometimes as a designer i try and stay more neutral because the darker right. the colors are the, the less likely you'll be able to actually showcase how they look right. whereas in real life they look amazing but, um, right. but if you're making things in navy and black, they're really hard to photograph and do them justice. Yep. So red is also a very hard color to photograph. And like a bright pink is very hard right. because it starts to blow out in yeah. whenever you're taking, like you can't get the lighting just right to take a photograph of those colors without it kind of looking like you were touching it up or something. I don't know. It has like this weird yeah. effect on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is a comment here about your lovely sweater that you're wearing. So oh. let's take a minute and we'll drop a little knowledge here. So this is for a special, we're not going to say too much. What we're yes. going to tell you is it's a special event coming up. It involves Hannah, Brianna, and Michelle. And if you want to find out all the details about it, you need to come back here next Wednesday and you need to sign up for everybody's newsletter so that you get the information first. So we're going to be lucky enough to be kind of the first to be able to share it beyond their email list. So sign up for their emails and join us back here next week to figure out what Hannah is wearing and what fun event it's part of because we're going to spill all the beans next week. Oh, I'm so excited. But like Granny's, Granny, because you've obviously done this Granny collection. Grannies are everywhere this year. I know. But like I even know. what I thought, I thought the summer we'd kind of, no, nope, but they're off again. <laughs> no, everywhere. Like I just saw it on a commercial, um, not to, like today. I was watching something on YouTube and a commercial came on and she's wearing a Granny Square like pullover with like these um, belly sleeves, you know, very like 70s yeah, to it. Like it is back and it is here to stay. I think so. <laughs> But I am loving it uh, so much. It's so great to see the Granny Square and come back in like a new way. It's not the typical Granny Square. And it's not your typical Granny Square anymore because it's not in like the really bad acrylic that felt scratchy and everything else. You can use <laughs> beautiful fibers to make Granny Squares. You can use beautiful colors to make Granny Squares. And I think that's why this course is coming out at such a great time because for like the project you're wearing and the projects we're going to talk about, color is going to be very important in how you're putting it together. Definitely. Definitely. But yeah, I'm very so excited. Going, is yeah. It, the 11th, is it next Wednesday? The 11th. Yeah. yeah. It's not far away. No, we are so excited. So make sure you grab Hannah's course so you can learn all about color and then come back next Wednesday so you can use all the knowledge you just learned to go ahead and join in the fun event that's coming up because that's going to be so awesome. Um, Dawn said, I'm working on MJ's granny pullover. Oh, is that the granny striped oh, one? I think so. Yeah. yeah. That one is beautiful. Um, yeah. It's like a cardigan oh. and a sweater and lots of options. Yeah, there's a cardigan, a pullover. I think there's a hooded something. Yes, that's right. And then ch ch children's ones as well. Yeah, she so. really got it. all the bases covered. It looks so great. <laughs> um, Hannah, I mean, Julia said that, Hannah, your color course is fabulous. Oh, I got it when it first came out. 
Aww. And well, this is and this is how terrible I am. Um, it's it's um on a, like a special launch, uh, which is going to finish at the end of next week. So there, it's it's half price basically at the moment. So it won't ever be as cheap as it is now. <laughs> yeah. So grab it now, even if you can't watch it right today. Um, or take time access. So right. once you have it, you right. have it. Right. And then plus check out everything else Hannah has, because there's a lot of great patterns and a lot of great things that you're going to want to check out. And again, sign up for her newsletter. You will be the first to know about next week's event, plus all the other fun stuff, like when this course came out and all the other things. I mean, we try to keep you updated. We love everything Hannah does. So it makes it real easy to just scream it from the rooftop. But um, Crystal said that she did. Oh, oh, I wonder. Um, Crystal said I did her top, not the dress. Top or not dress. Um, so maybe um, Dawn is talking about the pullover oh, wow. that was yes. in that other granny collection that she just did oh, over the summer. I forgot yes. about that. The comfy, yes. She yes. Comfy, didn't she? Yes. Yes, she did. Yes, she did a beautiful cardigan there. She did um, a nice little halter top that you could also turn into a dress. There's been some really great projects coming out there. Um, Chris said, I've been really into granny squares lately. Want to do some projects, but leaning towards monochromatic or monochrome. Yes, that would look awesome too. There's so many different ways you can play with color and we just absolutely love it. So, yeah. And I think there's kind of a myth that to, to have colors in something, you have to have tons of colors for it right. to be colorful, but it doesn't. Like no. sometimes the most impactful things have only two or three colors and it's right. just where you place them and how you use them and the, the choice of those two or three colors. It's right. really, exactly. don't get overwhelmed and don't overthink it too much. Yeah. would be my best advice. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try not to. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing about your wonderful course. We're so excited. Hopefully everybody jumps on board and goes and learns about color because let me tell you, you're going to want to do it before next week or at least get started and have the course ready to go because um, next week we're going to have a lot of fun too. It's a really great thing that we can't wait to share. Um, but check out the course, start learning all about color, color theory for all of your upcoming projects to put colors together because what is better than picking colors? I don't know. That's a fun, such a fun part about starting a new project is picking those colors. Better than swatching. Yes, 100%. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Still, both a necessity, just one is a little bit more fun than the other. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much to everybody for joining in live. If you couldn't watch live and you're watching the replay, we're still happy to have you. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. And we will do our best to answer them as quickly as possible. Don't forget to check out the links. It'll go into the description down below as well when we're done here. So you have all the links to get to the course, to get to all the past stuff and everything that we've kind of talked about today. So thanks so much, everybody. See you, Hannah. Bye.